And, and do I feel that some adult, that some minors are more equipped to engage in sexual activity with adults than others? Yes. Eliza Blue, a child sex trafficking survivor. Now she's advocating for the many children being exploited for profit. If the child so desires to have intercourse with an adult, that would be up to if the child has sure. desire and if the community also decides that the person that they're supposed to have intercourse with has is not using force, fraud, coercion, manipulation. Why don't you have a seat there and uh, get comfortable for that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the Jesse Smollett of the right, Eliza Blue. If you have even one foot in the door of the right wing algorithm on Twitter or YouTube, you've seen her face, you've seen her name, her like fifth name, by the way, we're on her uh, fifth invented identity. For the past year or so, she has been a darling of right-wing media and the online right sphere. She's made appearances on almost every notable and relevant right-wing podcast from The Blaze, Daily Wire, Timcast, Michael Malice. She, she's been everywhere. She even grifted close enough to the sun to develop a personal relationship with Elon Musk and help dictate policy on Twitter, making her objectively one of the most powerful people on social media. Her claim to fame is being a human trafficking survivor advocate, although she's recently been exposed for allegedly fabricating the entire story of her being human trafficked, and the timeline of her so-called victimhood is collapsing in real time. Friends of Eliza Blue claim that she is exaggerating her experiences for attention and clout, telling the Daily Beast, quote, it's making a lot of her old friends around here really angry, said Carly Winzel who claims to have known Blue for two decades, adding that she's completely lying. Look, there are a lot of questions about whether she was actually a victim of sexual tra trafficking. And I just want to say there are few forms of activism that I respect more than any individuals who wish to put even a dent in the monstrosity that is human trafficking. That is a worthwhile fight in my eyes. And so anyone who takes up that mantle, I think I speak for most people when I say that people view people like that as righteous. People view people like that as having their morals intact and inspirational, really inspiring all of us that we can do more in that fight. But what happens when someone lies about being a human trafficking survivor? What happens when someone fabricates that victimhood, grifts off that alleged victimhood, achieves fame, success, awards based on that fabricated victimhood? That is what's being alleged about Eliza Blue. So let's get into it. But depending on what year you come across this human named Eliza, you know her as different things based on whatever identity she currently has, whatever alias and persona, invented persona, you catch her in. Got to break out the list here because there's just so many names over the years have to keep up with. There's Eliza Morthland, Eliza Cuts, Eliza Seep, Eliza Knows, and now Eliza Blue. We're currently on Eliza Blue. However, these identities ranged from failed reality star. Now, Eliza lives a rock and roll lifestyle. She says she's pretty exciting, but she still has problems when it comes to men. I'm a uh, self-seeking, self-centered, and fear-based. Emo groupie who made a name for herself on MySpace, hanging out with Jeffree Star and earning herself a pretty bad reputation in the My Chemical Romance fandom because she allegedly, as the lore goes, stalked the hell out of Gerard Way, the frontman of the band My Chemical Romance, made herself unavoidable, stalked him, basically got into a relationship with him, faked a pregnancy, this is all alleged, and then, this isn't alleged, went to write fan fictions about him after their breakup, which is very bizarre. That's a whole video in and of itself, though. Once that grift expired, she picked up a black scent and decided her new target audience wasn't the emos, it was the blacks. I was blessed to work with one of the dopest directors in the game. Like, Video God, literally, like, if you look at his resume, I was so blessed as a world star, uh, I mean, sorry, as a plus size model. That's what's crazy with the world is that I still would have been plus even in that world star video. And I look at that now and I'm like, dang, I was so skinny, but it was a summer. And suddenly she was an urban hip hop video vixen. Once that grift expired, she set sights on her new and most current grift, right wing influencer. The topic of Jeffrey Epstein and human trafficking was, and still is, very hot within the online rights sphere. People talk about it 
all the time. The situation was ripe for someone to come in claiming to be a human trafficking survivor and become an influencer based on that supposed identity. Eliza finally found a grift that stuck, so much so that she had the ear of one of the richest and objectively most powerful men on the planet, Elon Musk. She drew Elon's attention and was, I think, very informally, like, where you can see it on Twitter, advising him on what what accounts are bad, you know, ha, ha, confront sex trafficking on the platform. She had the hosts of major right-wing podcasts eating up her story, even though she never, ever actually went into detail about who trafficked her, the situation she was in, the details of her supposed trafficking story. People just took it at face value because honestly, who wants to be the person to go against someone so virtuous. I'm speaking real. Who wants to be the person to say that she's a fraud when she is so apparently selflessly using her story and her hurt and her pain to help people, specifically minors, who have been victim of human trafficking? I know I wasn't going to want to be the first person to go after her until I started to see some cracks in her story. Some old clips started resurfacing of Eliza's. Ah, uh, yes, the old clip resurfacing. No influencer is safe from it. it. Happens to all of us. However, most people in that situation that have old clips resurface don't have to worry about like six invented personas that contradict each other. Clips from when she pretended to be black resurfaced <laughs> from the 2010s in which she was a video vixen doing music videos, which is fine enough on its face, minus the accent. I've always said people who you know, switch up their accents midway through life are batch crazy because there's never a reason to do that unless, you know, you move to a different country and subconsciously like the way of speaking sort of rubs off on you. That's one thing. But girl, no, you didn't change race. Rachel Dole is all. People started posting screenshots from these publicly available YouTube videos. Again, these videos were on YouTube, publicly available, as well as on World Star Hip Hop. Eliza didn't like that so much. She then reached into her deep connections at Twitter to get people banned off Twitter simply for, again, posting publicly available images. People like Brittany Venti, who's currently still banned off Twitter because of this. People like YouTuber The Quartering and a lot of other people were literally taken down off Twitter. So the free speech advocate, the woman who has all the right wing talking points down, right? She'll die on the hill of free speech, she repeatedly says, is suddenly engaging in mass censorship of people bringing up her past. Why? Because it reveals some major holes in her story. She's also been false flagging YouTube creators. People like The Quartering, Brittany Venti, Star Wars Girl, all these channels have been false flagged and more channels have been false flagged by her for daring to talk Talk about her past, her lies, and her story. So in all likelihood, she may try to false flag this video. I would advise you against that, Eliza, if you're watching. That's not the war that you want. I'd be lying if I said a big part of why I'm doing this video wasn't to defend them and to speak up on their behalf as well. Not that they're not speaking up on their own, but you know, I just don't like when people I like are fucked with, so... She claims that the music videos she participated in back when she pretended to be black were non-consensual and that's why she was having people banned. Keep in mind, it's not as if people are posting revenge porn of her or something. I mean, these are publicly available music videos on YouTube. Now again, Eliza claimed these music videos were non-consensual, but world star hip hop begs to differ. They released a statement saying the videos were consensual and she was paid for them. There's an interview where she reveals that she actually reached out to Worldstar herself in hopes to be in these videos. I, I just feel so blessed. And the way the whole thing came about, and I've never even told anybody this besides maybe a couple girlfriends, was I had a vision. I couldn't sleep one night. I couldn't sleep one night. I couldn't sleep. And I had a vision. I said to myself, what would take me to the next level? like for myself, what will get me to that next level of that demographic that I want to reach and bring them that, bring them that art, bring them that fashion, but still keep it within the scope of what I'm doing. And, and it, at about six o'clock in the morning, I just got this thing in my head, like world star, world star reaches the most people, like honestly, like that I could reach. You know what I mean? I'm never going to be on e entertainment television. I'm never going to be on TMZ. You know what I mean? Unless I do something crazy or stupid. Like, I'm never... <laughs> so she claims to have been saved from human trafficking, a story for which she has never provided a drop of evidence, by the way, in 2013. However... These music videos, some of them were published after 2013. So if this was really a result of you being trafficked, why are they happening years after you claim to have been saved from human trafficking? 
There are interviews back from her wannabe black days where she claims that she turned down $150,000 booking offers. Now booking, we all know what that means, girl. Booking. These bookings are for her time, right? And she talks about how she has all these athletes and famous people in her DMs trying to book her. It's interesting because if you were actually being trafficked at this time, that would mean that you're not in control of what you do. That would mean you're being forced to engage with these men, right? That's what being trafficked for sexual exploitation is. So someone who's been trafficked to engage with men for money certainly isn't within power to turn down bookings and definitely not for 150K. But let's be real, ain't nobody paying 150K for Eliza Blue. Eliza claims to have started a charity called the Humanity House, which is a safe haven for victims of human trafficking. Sounds like a very worthwhile endeavor. Only one problem, that charity is not registered. There is no proof of that charity existing. And there's no proof of anyone ever being taken into this humanity house. So you're grifting off helping all these people. You're making GoFundMes based on your status. You're going on interviews talking about how you're helping all these people. And there is no proof of this charity actually existing. Just your word, which so far, <laughs> not the most solid. But then again, it begs the question, maybe Eliza, being real here, doesn't actually know what human trafficking is. Because in an interview with Michael Malice, she claims that she was trafficked on Twitter. And the extent of that was basically that people made fake profiles of her on Twitter. Trafficked on Twitter as well. So there's been three profiles to my knowledge that my former abusers made to traffic me on Twitter. What, what does that mean that they trafficked you on Twitter? How can someone traffic you if they're not in contact with you? Yeah, so the way that that was working, I didn't know about the, about the profiles existing because I wasn't on Twitter and I wasn't looking for them. Uh, the way that my former abusers were doing it is that it was going back to my Instagram. The Twitter accounts were linking back to my Instagram and they were trafficking me off Instagram. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I mean, for me to tell my story at length uh, is going to take a while. I don't even, I don't even need that. To questions about my story is going to take a while. So I know the basics so of your story because I, I've listened to your podcast. Right, so what's. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the question is. Well, I can ask I mean, you the question. I didn't questions. agree to this. I didn't agree to this. All I agreed to was answering a few questions about Twitter. Well, okay, sure. That's totally fine. But can I just, can I ask you the questions or email you the questions and you can decide if you want to answer or not? I mean, did you, did you ask Amanda in advance? To do that? Uh, no, I, I told her that I wanted to ask you about the Twitter stuff and about your own okay. story. Okay, so you deceived Amanda, didn't tell her everything you wanted to ask no, me, I, and then I, you I, got I, a survivor on the phone no. and started asking her about her personal trauma. No, I, 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 that's, okay. not, that's not what happened. I said... Katie, I, think, I think we're probably going to be done here. And keep in mind, that video right there is the most she has ever gone into detail about her actually be human, being human trafficked. She's never named a name. She's never told the details. And granted, I'm not of the opinion that just because you were the victim of a crime, you have to go shouting the name of the person who did it to you from the rooftops. However, combined with all these contradictory timelines and the fact that she's never offered any proof whatsoever and the fact that her charity doesn't actually exist on record and the fact that she said she was saved from it this year but with participating in stuff this year, it's like... It's not looking good for Eliza. But even with all these weird lies and contradictions that we're catching her in, you would hope that you could at least be able to say that, okay, just because she possibly invented this lie about her being a victim of human trafficking doesn't mean she doesn't actually care about the issue. Maybe she's just that virtuous. So she's willing to put herself and her own credibility on the line to at least temporarily like give a voice to this issue, right? Like giving her a lot, but let's try to get there in our minds. I don't know because there's really disgusting clips of her going around where she's actually making excuses for children consenting to engaging with adults. So let's let's pretend like we all have our like utopia. So if 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 I could answer this in utopia, right? In my like uh you know, perfect in cap utopia. Each community, each community and each um so it'd be each caregiver, parent and community including teachers um potential faith leaders and neighbors will decide if the child is ready to consent and, and look at the child's behavior. Do they have a job? How is their education going? Are they, cogn are they cognitively available to have uh, sex with this individual? And then um, also look at the history of the individual as well. So does this, um, does this individual have a history of abuse? Um, yep. And then you go from there. And
And, and do I feel that some adult, that some minors are more equipped to engage in sexual activity with adults than others? Yes, the community and the child, if the child so desires to have intercourse with an adult, the parents, caregivers, and anyone that's, I mean, it's just what I just said. I, I, that would be up to if the child has sure. desire and if the community also decides that the person that they're supposed to have intercourse with has, is not using force, fraud, coercion, manipulation. So just to recap, in Eliza's self-proclaimed perfect <laughs> utopia and cap society in her head, so her perfect world, and her perfect world, part of that is children consenting to sex with adults if the people around that child believes that they can consent. And this is a child advocate. Amazing. I mean, this is like an animal rights advocate saying like, you know, in some situations, it's okay for a dog owner to abuse their dog if like everyone in the household agrees it's okay. Like that's literally what you just said. You crazy b She tried to defend the reprehensible clips stating, I went on the show to advocate for survivors and minors. Amazing advocate work there, girl. I was speaking in the clip about a hypothetical anarchist society with no government and no laws, and I stated that clearly. I believe in the current laws around these issues and abide by the current laws. I forgive the folks who didn't understand the context of the clips, even those who called me horrible names. We have nothing else to discuss, so please don't message me privately. I forgive you, but we, gave, we have nothing more to discuss. I've seen your heart towards me. Huh. I had to respond. I said, you said some minors are capable of consenting to sex with adults. If that's advocating for minors, I'd hate to see what harming them looks like. Furthermore, you specifically said in your perfect ANCAP society, there would be circumstances in which minors have sex with adults, meaning this is your idea of a utopia, girl. You are completely demented and your grift has expired. And I stand on that because I'm sorry, even if she really is a victim of human trafficking, which at this point I do not believe based on all the lies she's already been caught in, all the weird like contradictions, she completely disqualifies herself from speaking on these issues when she fixes her dumb mouth to say that minors can consent to sex with adults. And you are demented, you are crazy, you are psychotic, and we have to get into why you're inventing all these personas throughout your life. Because I don't think you were human trafficked, but I do think something happened to you, baby girl. Something definitely happened to you. But that doesn't excuse you spitting on the graves of people who have actually been human trafficked, spitting in the face of people who are currently experiencing it now, making up your bullshit story, and then allowing yourself to be on camera saying children can consent. Like what in the Nambla talking point? And the gaslighting with this hoe is unbelievable, saying she forgives people who don't understand. No one needs your forgiveness, Eliza. People need the truth about the story that you've concocted. Eliza is the daughter of an Illinois politician named Richard Morthland. Now, I don't know why she denies being this man's daughter. It doesn't make any sense to me, but actually, now that I'm thinking about it in my head, it actually does make sense. That black scent, first of all, you're the privileged daughter of a politician in Illinois, the lieutenant governor, okay? that black sense got to go. I'm glad you dropped it, but it should have never been there in the first place. So you're not some urban. <laughs> and then secondly, the daughter of a politician being human trafficked would have been headline news, but it wasn't because you weren't in my opinion. Now, Elon Musk has unfollowed Eliza Blue. I'm sure he caught on to her grift as well. After all, all this has been public information. I'm not bringing anything new to light. I'm just amplifying what's already out there. And it does make Twitter 2.0 under Elon look... <laughs> Just as bad as the old Twitter where people were getting banned for unjust reasons. I mean, seeing people get banned for publicly posting screenshots of YouTube videos that are currently up is like, that's pretty disgusting. My take on Eliza is that she's a very deeply damaged person. Anyone that has had like five, six personas throughout the years that are all completely different, that develops a new way of speaking to target different people, and that is bizarre behavior, okay? But all those invented personas, whatever. You standing on the backs of real victims, leveraging those real victim stories, propping up your, in my opinion, fake story for clout, for power, for fame, and then abusing TOS on social media to censor people who call out your lies is disgusting. Because what's so crazy is that she could have been a human trafficking survivor advocate without actually being human trafficked. You didn't have to make up that lie. I know it probably gave you more clout, it gave you more credibility in your mind or whatever, but I would have loved to see someone become an influencer just on the basis of that issue without having to invent lies to do it. You didn't have to be an alleged victim. 
to make that your issue. I fight for many issues on my channel, on my social media that I don't claim to have been a victim of myself. I mean, the only way I see Eliza getting out of this one is if she brings back that black scent and cries racism. That is it for this video, you guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to me on this channel as well as my podcast channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.